Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. Someone asked if we would uh, be editing these videos uh, in future, and I just said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, never say never, but uh, yeah, this, we've been doing this this way forever, where we just kind of start midstream, and you get a little pre-show, and you know, that's the way it goes. We actually, Tom, we talked about um, you know adding a little something, something to the headlines as well. So, you know, Oh yeah, no, that's true. That's true. We're not averse. Uh, put it this way. Uh, edit, editing these down to just being the show is not high on the priority list. Cause it, it most requires somebody to actually do that specific. Well, yeah. Job. Every day. And then, yeah. um, and a lot of people like getting the, uh, most people seem fine getting the little pre and post show stuff. So. I think it threw him off because we were really like in the middle of a sentence yesterday uh, when it went live. But hey, you want the rest of that sentence? Become a patron. You can hear it in the audio version. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Hat Friday. Yes, sure is. We got some. We got some Bay Area hat uh, solidarity going on with me and me and Sarah. Uh, we've got a a uh, refusing to. Let go of the October dream hat going on with Len. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to think if I have a hat I can wear that I haven't worn on the show yet. Oh yeah, I have a whole I have a whole cabinet. Any this, my monitor is actually yeah. sitting on a cabinet full of hats. <laughs> True story. I've seen it. Yeah. Any hats. <laughs> oh, when you get a chance on e control talk. I just gave it to you. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. You well, you can. <laughs> All right. Any questions before we get rolling here? No, no one for me. Not a one. All right. I'm good. Good. You know, um, I shouldn't distract myself by thinking about that. I got a. I I got the United Miles thing, little catalog. Oh. And I have enough miles to get a 34 inch Dell monitor. Mm. <laughs> the ultra wide or just really yeah. big monitor? Yeah, the ultra wide. Oh, it's amazing. I have yeah. it. It's what I'm, I'm using like, right here. It would go right there. See? See, you're proving that I should get it. It's really nice. That's right one. Now, well, you can't see it. Well, yeah. All right. Let's begin the show. Um, Sarah. Yes. I just had this idea just the second. Oh, okay. You should read the Daily Tech News Show is powered by you part. I can do that. All right. It means a little coordination though. All right, ready? All right. Mm -hmm. Three, two. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for October the 13th of Friday, Friday the 13th. It's Friday the 13th in our headquarters in LA. I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Feline at Venice Beach, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Sailor Snub Studio in Richmond, California, I am Shannon Morse. Of course, Len Peralta is here as well. And this new way of starting the show, Len, is going to reduce the amount of times I forget to introduce you. <laughs> I love it. By Very about good. 90%. Anything that helps. Anything that helps, Tom. Uh, Len's here to illustrate the show. We're going to be talking a little bit about how Google is teaming up with all the retailers in the world to take down Amazon. Roger Chang is here. Roger, how are you feeling? I am good. Let's start. <laughs> I'm fine. Great. With a few <laughs> things. He's fine, guys. He's fine. Quiet down, Roger. <laughs> Let's start with a few tech things you should know. The Netherlands Data Protection Authority has determined that Windows 10 breaches privacy law because of the telemetry data it collects. Though users can opt out of data collection, the DPA determined that Microsoft doesn't clearly inform users of what data is collected and how it is used, therefore meaning it's hard for them to make an informed decision. I feel like it's pretty easy to figure out what they're collecting because you you choose to opt in or you choose to opt out when you reinstall Windows. But if it's already installed, it's really hard to find that info. Mm -hmm. 
Western Digital announced it has developed microwave assisted magnetic recording or MAMR hard drives that use a spin torque oscillator to write a magnetic media at a lower field packing morbid's in. The first MMR drive should arrive in 2019 with 40 terabyte drives available by 2025. Qualcomm filed lawsuits in China to ban the sale and manufacture of iPhones due to patent infringement. Apple and Qualcomm have several legal disputes over the terms of patent licensing. And that's where they make most of the iPhones. This is getting nasty. Yep. Ooh, All right, here's some more top stories. Samsung had a good news, bad news day. Uh, it expects operating profit of 14.5 trillion won in Q3. That is a 179% increase over 2016. They had a profit last in q3 of last year but it was muted because of the recall so they've bounced back quite well however ceo and vice chairman oh hyun kwan resigned saying the company faces an unprecedented crisis and is calling for new leadership so it's not that they're not making money it's the leadership that's in crisis. And if you haven't been following this, Samsung's chairman, Lee Kun Hee, has been ill for years. The company has been run by his son, J.Y. Lee, uh, who is the vice chairman. But Lee, J.Y. Lee, was recently sentenced to five years in jail for bribery, embezzlement, capital flight, and perjury uh, because of his dealings with a friend of the president of South Korea who was forced to step down. It's a whole big political scandal there. Uh, so Where's while Samsung's doing is, What does well, capital flight mean? Oh, uh, that's when you uh, um, you you hide hide your capital somewhere, I think. Got it. You know, yes. like yeah, yeah. Okay. money runs yes. to another location. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so Samsung doing great. The company itself is, is like, it had a huge recall and it just bounced right back and it's printing mm -hmm. money and the Galaxy S8 is doing awesome, but the leadership is in crisis. Moving on, KGI Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo wrote in his investor's note that he believes <clears throat> all 2018 models of the iPhone will use Face ID in place of Touch ID. This would allow Apple to build all future phones with full screen designs. It's not How super do, surprising at all. So, yeah, I mean, I guess. I, I'm a little surprised they wouldn't have any models uh, it, uh, having Touch ID. Touch ID is very useful. You'd think you'd have like an SE model with Touch ID. But I know what what Quo's saying is that Apple has an advantage with 3D sensing right now on mm -hmm. smartphones, and it wants to push that advantage. Do we feel like that's okay? I mean, we haven't even got a chance to try Face ID yet, so it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, I'm just curious about how secure it is. <laughs> well, yeah, how how well does it work? Uh, it, how how it, I think it's going to be fairly secure because it's using the same secure enclave as Touch ID, mm -hmm. but how easy is it to fool, right? Exactly. It's not so much about the storage of the data as it is about the spoofing. like Fooling it, yeah. Yeah. Would a really good 3D print of my head be able to fool a Touch ID? Or Apple a says ID? no. They say they have Hollywood modelers who've, who've made copies of people's heads and, and could not fool Face ID. Wow. Twins, on the other hand, <laughs> twins are a problem. Ooh. I mean, Touch ID has been more or less pretty secure, right? So if you, you know, if you think of it in terms of that, it's like, okay, I mean, mm -hmm. seems like the next logical step but, Beatmaster points out that that uh, he thought the analyst said that Apple didn't integrate Touch ID on the 10 because the tech wasn't there. It wasn't that the tech wasn't there. It's that they couldn't get the Touch ID to fit under the glass so that they could get rid of the button and they without it being too expensive. So they, they just ditched it. Wow. And what Quo's saying now is they've just decided it's not worth pursuing that. Wow. All right, well, moving on, Facebook announced US users can now order food for takeout and delivery in the Facebook app and website. Facebook is not operating the delivery, but partnering with Grubhub, Delivery.com, DoorDash, ChowNow, Zuppler, Eat Street, Slice, and Olo. Facebook also partnered directly with some restaurant chains like Chipotle and Five Guys. Restaurants are now collecting in the new order food area. So I'm probably not going to tell my husband that they're doing this now because I hate it when he orders Popeyes to go and has it delivered by Grubhub. <laughs> <laughs> 
Popeyes to There's, go. Yes. Good chicken and Popeyes. You can do you that never here. Heard of such a thing? It's so weird. Lost <laughs> your husband. You can do uh, you can do El Pollo Loco on here as well. Um, there's uh okay but the weird thing about this my diet is like getting mcdonald's delivered (laughs) the weird thing about this is you're not ordering it through facebook and as far as i can tell you're not even paying through facebook Mm -mm. you're just going to a page that collects a bunch of services so on that respect it's almost one of the most open things facebook's ever done they're like saying we don't care but they don't have all the services they don't have caviar on here i don't think they have uber eats on here so you're not getting a full spread of the comparisons uh, and if you don't have an account set up at one of these things, it's not that convenient because you're going to get kicked out to one of them and then you're going to go, oh, I don't have a DoorDash account. So, okay, I got to put in my credit card number and make all that happen. There are a lot of restaurants that are currently doing this, so it's not a huge change from what's currently happening if you order online from a website yeah. and get delivery. Um, but it's making it a lot better easier for consumers as long as you already have those accounts if you're already in facebook i guess right but and i guess there's people who spend that much time in facebook and they're like "Hmm, i'm getting hungry i've spent so much time in facebook (laughs) let's get some mcdonald's (laughs) raspberry revealed the new pi top modular laptop with a sliding keyboard that makes it easy to access the raspberry pi 3 board and space for additional parts has a full-size keyboard 14 inch hd screen and 180 degree opening angle plus three usb 2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. There's also an inventor's kit that comes with it. That has another add-on board, some LEDs, a microphone, a motion sensor, all of which can snap magnetically into the case. The Pi Top will cost you $320 though. That's expensive for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, If you already have a Pi 3, you can just pay $285 for the laptop assembly and put your own Pi in it if you want to. Still kind of expensive, relatively speaking though. This is really interesting because back in the day, I believe it was Motorola that made a laptop very similar to this layout that was made for one of their phones. So you could just plug in the phone and be able to use a desktop screen and a Mm. keyboard with it. So this is kind of going along with the same thing. I I barely remember it, but we did a hack on Hack 5 with a Raspberry Pi and we plugged it into this Motorola laptop thing and it worked perfectly so i'm glad that they're finally getting on board with this but it is rather expensive i mean but you're also getting a 14 inch laptop so Mm -hmm. i mean when you look at it as a 14 inch laptop 320 dollars dollars yeah Yeah. that's that's pretty cheap and you're getting i mean the idea is this is educational it also comes with a bunch of of uh, software that gives you challenges and exercises to work out and solve problems uh and working on hardware so i think overall it's pretty fantastic i think we're just so used to paying virtually nothing for raspberry pi boards exactly (laughs) yeah that you get a little sticker shock when you're like "Ooh, three digits crazy well if you'd like to talk about four digits (laughs) I've got just the story for you. Sony has begun selling its Xperia Touch projector, which can display 80-inch movies and games, but also project a fully functional 23-inch Android touchscreen on any flat surface. The projector is capable of 1366 by 768 resolution, 100 lumens of brightness, and a 4,000 to 1 contrast ratio. It runs Android Nougat and has three gigabytes of memory. And if you can find one in stock, you can order now for $1,700. I don't know how many of these things they made, but apparently they ran out of stock on Amazon real quick. Uh, and and I'm fascinated by it. I don't know that I'm so fascinated to drop 1700 because now we are talking about something that's expensive. But uh, yeah. it apparently works pretty well. And it's, it's, it's an Android device. That, that's the weirdest thing about it. It's a projector that is a fully contained Android device that just projects its interface onto the table. I'm not super familiar with projectors. It's not something that I've studied a lot, but is 4,000 by one an excellent contrast ratio for projectors? I think yes. it's okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it's good. Is it it's good? good. Mm. Yeah. I guess okay, the resolution cool. could be a little better, but the, the contrast ain't bad. Okay. I'll buy that. We've seen cheapos at CES and places places like that, like similar things like to this, this technology, uh, but I don't believe we ever saw one from Sony. So this is pretty cool. I, I want to learn more about it. I would like to like play with it before I would ever think of purchasing one. I think it's the 20, uh, it's the ability to project a, a touch screen that mm-hmm. makes it kind of nifty. 
Right. Yes. <laughs> I think that's entirely what makes it nifty. Otherwise, it's just a projector, right? Otherwise, <laughs> who's going to spend $1,700 on such a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it may not be like the highest resolution projector. It's far from it, right? But but you're right, Roger. It's the touchscreen stuff that makes it interesting because where wherever you are, you've got an interface. Yeah, and, and the, the specs are middle of the road. I mean, they're not high end, but they're I mean they're they're good for what they are, and it's really the touch screen that pulls it off. Hey folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines at dailytechheadlines.com. You can also get it on your Amazon Echo in the Anchor app, where you can even flip through the individual bits and on the Google Home through the Anchor app. And that's a look at our top stories. So, Google and Target announced a partnership Thursday to expand their delivery test. They'd been doing it in a couple of cities, but now they're going to go across the entire continental U.S., order something from Target, have it delivered through Google. Uh, and, and the biggest thing that they keep talking about is voice ordering. So if you've got a Google Home, you can tell it to order you something from Target. You need a stylish chair, a Massimo shirt, some cat litter, whatever. You can tell Google <laughs> yes. Home to order it for you. All of these things I need. <laughs> uh, Google also has deals with Walmart and Home Depot already on board. So Recodes, Jason Del Rey says, huh, I think what they're aiming for is not just to beat Amazon. Obviously, this is a take on Amazon where Amazon says, get an Echo, order from Amazon. Everybody orders everything from Amazon. You're done. Uh, Google's saying, hey, but what if you want to get something from Home Depot or Walmart or Target? We're going to have a bigger uh, stable of retailers because we're able to, to bring in more people than Amazon. Although Amazon is a partner with a lot of these retailers as well. So that's that's a little weirdness. But back to Jason Del Rey, he thinks what they're after is augmented reality. He thinks because Google is working on things like Daydream VR and augmented reality in Android, that they want to come out with the ability to shop in a virtual space. So Google has actually worked on stuff like that with Lowe's, where you could look at your Android phone and look at your room and then put Lowe's stuff. Pottery Barn, same thing. You put Pottery Barn furniture, see if it fits. Uh, and he thinks that's how they want to jump in front of Amazon. Hmm. It's very interesting. I have a lot of questions about this, to be honest. A lot of questions. Mostly having to do with security, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, a couple of the downsides, customer confusion over who's responsible for what, right? Yeah. So when I order from Amazon, I know to complain to Amazon. But if I order from Google Home, do I complain to Google? Do I complain to Target? Do I complain to Lowe's? Uh, that needs to be made clear to me. Maybe they'll have a system. Maybe it is just I, I'll respond to Google. Right. But that also means there's multiple vectors for attacks, right? Exactly. And I mean, first off, well, what do what do Home Depot and what do Target already have in common? Both of them have had a breach and have been hacked. And millions of people have lost their credit card data or other data that Target or Home Depot was saving at the time. Now, of course, we can assume that both of those companies have increased their security protocols since then. And oh my goodness, I hope that's a fact. But the fact also still remains that whenever you have multiple different vectors, you also bring in multiple different uh, potential attack vectors as well. So unless Google is working to provide the same kind of technology uh, for ordering for all of these companies and working within um, their current infrastructure to make that happen, then there could be potential hacks happening just from that transmission of data going from Google's voice activated system to to targets uh, inventory and targets uh, purchasing power, because then you have that transfer of data between the two, like how is that transfer happening? So whenever I hear about things that are happening between two businesses, I get a little bit worried because we never know exactly how those businesses are encrypting data and how they are keeping it safe within their servers. Well, and I mean, I purchase things from Amazon quite uh, frequently and many times it's a third uh, party uh, mm -hmm. person that I'm, you know, <clears throat> ordering from. Right. And uh, the rules are a little weird depending well, on, you know, where it's I would actually assume, originating like, from. So this yeah, is not yeah. something that, you know, Google's not reinventing the wheel here. <laughs> um, it seems like they're trying to uh, keep up with Amazon and that makes perfect sense. But 
it's not a perfect system. No, and I don't think it ever is going to be. And the thing with Amazon third parties is generally that that processing of the payment and stuff like that is happening on Amazon servers. And then they send the customer data to, you know, the third party so that you can get your shipment and they get paid for everything out of Amazon. But when you have Google transmitting that voice data to Target and then implementing that that purchase, I feel like it it might add in an additional layer of security that's needed there so that there, that transmission doesn't break somewhere. Well, and that's why something like Android Pay is, is so fortuitous, because yeah. uh, if this all works the way it's supposed to, all Target ever gets is the order uh, and the confirmation that it's been paid. Right. And then Google sends a big chunk of money to them at the end of the month, I would assume. That's like, here's here, this should total up with all of your orders. Here's your money. And, and just like Apple Pay, your credit card number and everything is never exposed to the merchant. So it could actually make things safer for places like Target and Home Depot because they no longer have to store all this payment information. It's stored with Google uh, and, and granted, you know, not that Google could never be hacked, but Google seems to be a little better at this sort of thing uh, than some of these retailers. So I, yeah. I look at it as a, as a possible positive as well. I, I hope that you're right on that front. I definitely agree. So so we definitely know that we have some questions about security and hopefully they're implementing proper protocols for it all. My other question for you guys is this weekend I went to Target and I wanted to buy some Halloween decorations. I found these lights that I wanted to use for decoration and all of a sudden I was like, I wonder if I can get this cheaper on Amazon. So even though I would have to wait two extra days, I bought it on Amazon because it was cheaper to buy it there. And I didn't mind because I'm not having Shannon, a Halloween party. Shannon, you the showroomed them. You showroomed Target. I did. I totally showroomed them. So I'm wondering if by including all these, you know, voice activated purchases from different big box retailers, if that will give them the ability to increase sales and also lower costs by having more uh, more sales going on through their through their big boxes. Well, and that points to one of the things that I have a problem with with all of these systems, including the Amazon Echo, which is I want to be able to shop around on my voice assistant. I want yeah. to be able to say, hey, voice assistant, who has the best price on Halloween lights exactly. and have them say like, oh, well, Target's got it for five fifty, but Amazon's got it for four ninety nine, and Lowe's actually has a sale. It's three ninety nine. So maybe you should go there instead. Uh, with Google Home having more retailers in the hopper, conceivably that that could be an advantage, but yeah. you're not going to get it compared to Amazon. And like you say, Amazon also works with tons, hundreds, thousands of third parties. So you can actually use Amazon to shop around, which is actually one of the problems Google has is they're, they're worried that so many people use Amazon as a product search engine right now right, because do. <laughs> Amazon doesn't fulfill everything. Uh, like so, so in the end, I actually want somebody who isn't partnering with the retailers. This is always the problem with shopping aggregators online, all, going all the way back to shopper.com <laughs> on CNET. It's always a problem of, hey, you know, one way we can make money is to partner with the retailers and take a cut, which means that we can't point to the best deal. We can only point to the best deal among our partners. Mm -hmm. And then you I, run into a headache. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know how we get there, but I want these voice assistants uh, and these these smart speakers and everything uh, to be platform independent. I don't want to have to think, well, wait a minute, should I switch to Spotify because Google Music isn't on the Amazon Echo? Or, oh, wait, should I switch to the Amazon Echo? Because I love shopping on Amazon and I can't shop on yeah. Amazon on the Google Home. It's like, that's not the way it should work. It's way too proprietary and it's cutting off a lot of consumers while they're doing that. Yeah. Um, I think on the other hand, that it might be a really good thing that they're, they're kind of they're bringing all of these different big box retailers into one place where you can order everything. So it's making it easier for consumers if you're not the kind of person that likes to shop around. You just want to get the thing and you want to get it done and then you want to get it delivered and you don't care how long it takes to get it delivered. You just want to get that whole shopping experience done. But Google also mentions in one of their articles that people really enjoy that shopping experience. So they've been talking about the virtual thing too. Hmm. Yeah, that, uh, and that's where that augmented reality speculation from Jason Del Rey comes into place. Right. And I do think that that is a threat to Amazon. That is a thing that unless we hear of something new, and I wouldn't put it past Amazon to have something in development, Amazon doesn't have an augmented reality strategy. Not that I know of. 
Yeah. Do we want do okay? So this makes sense on paper, right? You right. you have a, you have a shopping service, and then you have uh, an augmented reality glass that allows you to like shop around with Target and Home Depot and Amazon and everybody. All right, let's just pretend it's a new world. Do you want really want to do that? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no. I spend way too much time shopping as it is. <laughs> I mean, they Sarah, say that yeah. there's this joy around shopping, but it's really this joy around spending money and being a consumer. And if you're trying to save money and you don't want to spend your time shopping, you'd rather spend it with like friends and family. We, if I I'm feel like it's an in, addiction. If I'm not in the store, <laughs> do I want to pretend to go into the store or do I just want to <laughs> tell the voice assistant to buy it? Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would just ask the no. voice assistant to buy it for me. I don't want to spend time in the store more than I need to. I hate no, dealing no, with yeah. being in a virtual <laughs> store is like not a thing that people are trying to like, let's have more of that. Um, it's, it, it makes sense. Um, it fills a need, but I don't think it's like really tapping into like the buyer, uh, you know, uh, the, it's not the, the thing that I've been sitting around saying, exactly. I wish I had, I mean, the yeah. furniture thing kind of makes sense, but even then I'm like, yeah, but how accurate is it really going to be? Um, yeah. so yeah. I, I'd rather go to some floor plan app and, and get like accurate dimensions and work with that. A lot of things I want to put my hands on. That's why I go to the store. Is like oh, I want to see how the controls feel, or I want to mm -hmm. I want to see what that that finish looks like on on that device. And augmented reality is always just going to be a representation. It's not really going to give me that. Right. That's a that's a great uh, uh, extra that you had there too. Because I was, I was just reminded I just bought a little. Uh, this thing, this little blanket from Pottery Barn, and I bought it from a, w one of the stores as opposed to going online because I wanted to feel it in my hands and see if it was something that I really liked. Uh, and I don't think you can recreate that digitally. You can't really recreate the feel of something. Yeah, yeah. not not at, in 2017. I mean, I'm going to say this. Whatever they do, it needs to be convenient, mm -hmm. and it needs to fulfill a convenience need that I have. Now, if they can do the augmented reality to the point where, hey, I got I, I need to replace this faucet handle. I need to find something that fits this. I don't know what to I don't know what to look that's, for. That's if I one. look at it and it can go through the Home Depot inventory list, oh, you need you can use six of these products. Which one do you want to buy? We can have at your door, you know, blah blah. That's the one thing Amazon can't do. It can't tell me the right product to buy to fix my sink or, yeah. you know, the right, the right, you know, widget to go in my car to make it run again, you know, all those things, all these little things that by themselves are very like, yeah, you know, I, I, the I, grommet I, broke off my dishwasher or, yeah. or, you know, I need a hanger that fits this article of clothing better. That's the kind of thing augmented reality could help me with. Yeah, because household things are hard because sometimes you don't even know what it's called, so you don't even know what to search exactly. for. Like, and then you take the thing to Home Depot and you're like, what is this? Where can I find it? I need a new one. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't even exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> And everyone has done it once in their life. If you, if you, especially if you're a homeowner, you do a Home Depot hardware shuttle run. where you are going back and forth to the store. It's the right part. You buy like five of them because you want to go <laughs> back to the store it's just once. And I, you know, I've done that. And you're like, oh, this doesn't work. I'll try the other one. I did. You know, this lock doesn't fit. I, I have four yeah. more. I bought. Try it. Find the one that fits and return the other four. Be great. You could just eyeball it with your augmented reality glasses. It tells you, oh, only this product fits with your door. You're gonna have to buy this. You know, it would I save you so much trouble. I think with the ability that Google has for search and for for being able to find the information that you need so easily these days, they could easily uh, target that that market of people who who are homeowners and things like that, especially with these these agreements that they've made or that they're going to make with these big box stores. I think going from that view, this could be huge for Google. Yeah. I mean, if the including with the demographic data they might collect, oh, your kid's getting bigger. These diapers aren't going to fit next month. Yeah, you should no seriously consider you know, the next size up, which is what I'm dealing with right now. And we had to go and run out to Target to buy diapers that fit. Um, and if, again, if they can really get that convenience 
aspect of it down, that's where they really threaten Amazon because people buy stuff from Amazon because it's convenient, right? And it's yeah. not even just like, oh, I, I just want this thing. It's just like, I really need this thing. It's faster if I buy it from Amazon than going down to the store because it's such a small item, innocuous item or something like that. Well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. It's one of the ways we figure out what to talk about on the show. We're listening to you. We're seeing what you're talking about. But it's also a way that you can talk to other people in the audience about all kinds of things that we don't have time to talk about. So go check it out, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Got an email today uh, from a media teacher in still hot South Carolina who says, I was super excited to learn from you guys that Disney was expanding their Movies Anywhere program to non-Disney studios. I have a rather extensive film library that I use in class as a demonstration of masters doing techniques I'm teaching to students. So I began to add movies to my library. Yes, I was rebuying things I already own in other formats, but they were actually adding value. So I was willing to give them more money until I realized that some films weren't showing. It took a bit of research, but Citizen Kane seems to be from a studio that isn't signed on with movies anywhere. But it isn't remotely clear, either from the retailers or movies anywhere, that specific films are not eligible for the service. So until they make it more clear or add more studios, my movie buying binge is done. My two cents? I'd make them show up in the Movies Anywhere library, but clicking on them presented a message about why they didn't play. Speaking of adding value, you guys add value to my life, so I finally became a Patreon supporter. I've been meaning to for a while, but just never sat down and did it. So in closing, I'd encourage all the people that listen and have thought about pledging to just sit down and do it. It takes less than a minute and returns some of the value you get. Apple oh, teacher, co-associate producer of Daily Tech News Show, Josh. Oh, love you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. And Josh and I actually exchanged emails about this and we tracked down his problem because oddly, I had just bought Citizen Kane in Movies Anywhere yesterday. So I'm <laughs> like, okay, it worked for me. Why didn't it work for you? We figured it out. There are two digital versions in Amazon. One is a 70th anniversary edition. That one is not listed in Movies Anywhere for whatever reason. And that was the one he had bought and didn't show up, which was why he was so frustrated. So still some bugs to work out there. Hmm. All right, let's check in with Len and find out what he has been drawing during the show. Len. Yeah, you know, as it is, uh, sometimes with these shows, uh, the discussion goes a little bit different than what uh, I envisioned with the drawing. Uh, one thing that I took from it was that Amazon and uh, and Target were creating an alliance, sort of like an anti-Amazon sort of thing. And the first thing that popped in my mind, of course, Antifa. <laughs> I don't know. I've been, really, <laughs> I've been very political right. lately, recently. But anyway, uh, this one is called Anti-Ams, Anti-Amz, and it's a it's a, it's showing the alliance of Target and Google taking down the behemoth. <laughs> which is yes, Amazon. Yes, those tiny little Anti <laughs> rebels, <laughs> Google and Amazon. Oh, so good. I like yes, the Target exactly. shield. Yeah, the Target shield, and then the little sign that says, turn it all upside down, which of course is the upside down. <laughs> they want to turn down. that Amazon smile into a frown, don't <laughs> that's they? That's right, that's right. It's uh, and uh, So this is available right now in my online store. You can pick it up. Uh, you can also get a digital version of you if you choose. And uh, I want to remind everybody that, of course, uh, this week was the premiere of The Last Jedi uh, sh uh, trailer. And uh, in order to honor Sarah Lane being here, as well as the Art Prov Friday group, Roger, uh, Tom, and myself, we are all on a uh, DTNS uh, poster, Last Jedi poster, uh, which you can uh, get your name on if you choose. Uh, there are still some slots available. There's 30 slots available and uh, you can get your name in the credits. Be in the kind of a way to become an even deeper part. Yeah, your name is wow. will be on the poster if you're one yeah. of those 30 slots. And uh, such a good poster too. Oh, it's really, Gorgeous. really cool. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably one of my favorite ones I've done for the show. So good, Yay. yeah. Go check it out, folks. LenPeraltaStore.com and get in before the 30 slots are gone. Yes. Shannon Morris, what's going on over at Tech Thing? 
Oh, lots is going on. So we just released an episode where I reviewed the Super Nintendo Classic, and it was so much fun. And on that episode, I actually announced that we're doing a giveaway of the NES Classic, which you can't even find nowadays. So I decided I got an extra one, and I was like, instead of scalping it, I'm going to give it away. So Aww. if you want to get in on that action, you can go over to youtube.com slash tech thing and comment on the newest episode and make sure to subscribe so you can hear the announcement at the end of the month. I'm super excited to give it away. And it's just kind of a way to give back to the community because you have all been so good to me. And then with Hack 5, we're doing a really big event. It's on October 20th. Uh, I believe supplies are limited as far as the event bright, bright tickets, but uh, if we can open up more slots, we definitely will. Basically, we're launching three new gadgets for the Hack Shop lineup. So if you're really interested in that, if you're new to hacking or if you're an InfoSec professional, definitely get in on it if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's October 20th and the Event details are over at hack5.org slash RSVP. You could remember it because it's my brother's birthday. Oh, happy birthday to him. <laughs> uh, folks, our first two DTNS Labs episodes will be in your feed this weekend. One episode about the gear Scott Johnson uses on art tech and another one on game consoles in advance of the holiday season, which is Patrick Beja and Scott Johnson as well. If you're a Patreon, you already got those episodes early. That's one of the perks of supporting us at patreon.com slash DTNS. Lots of ways to get a hold of us. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclubtv.tv. And our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. Back on Monday with Veronica Belmont and the, the other part of tech thing, Patrick Norton. Talk to you then. <laughs> this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> All right. Good show, you guys. Yeah. Shannon. Shannon, you really brought the noise. I was a little slow today, but thank no, you. No, no. <laughs> Quite no. the opposite. You were, you were great. It's a little delayed. <laughs> no, you were good. Really uh, good. I always got to uh, ask those security questions, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. So, what do we call this masterpiece? Oh, I saw really good. Um, there's Google sets its target on Amazon. Mm. No, no, yeah, I like uh -huh. that. One. That uh, was a mm. food book <laughs> talking about digits. Raspberry Pi wants a piece of the laptop pie. Mm. Raspberry wants a piece of the laptop pie. Talking you showroomed it. them, <laughs> faced food. Popeye, the social media man. <laughs> okay, that that one, I, I get it, but it doesn't really make sense. Laugh. <laughs> Is it a touch screen without a screen? Keeping up with the Amazons, Google targets. Oh, that's, uh, did you find similar. the one that you saw, Shannon? Yeah, I did. It's the Google sets its targets on Amazon. That's my I kind of like that one, too. Any others you like in there, Roger? Um, sets its target on uh, I, I like that one. I like either I like, one, the Google targets Amazon or Google yeah. sets its targets. If you did Amazon. Google targets Amazon, just take out the apostrophe. Yeah. That we'll, would work. we'll fix that for you, Nick, with a C. <laughs> you know what? If they could just get it so you could take... So one of the things about appliances is they all have very long model numbers on it. So whether it's refrigerator, washer, dryer, dishwasher, if you take a picture of that and it automatically just inventories your local home depot or whatever with all the appropriate parts what do you need to buy you need belts new drum new motor new display it's probably cheaper to buy a new washing machine but whatever uh, excuse me <laughs> <laughs> Classy. <It> happens thanks. <laughs> these I, things happen I, yeah i can taste it from here oh <laughs> you don't want to taste that like mushrooms, risotto, and weird stuff. <laughs> I don't know what my kombucha tastes like right now. Risotto. Hmm. I had. <laughs> what did I have? I had a, uh, a a squash pasta, but now squash I can't remember buckling. pickled. No, not pickled. Yeah, but it was a it was a pasta with squash in it. 
It had a fancier name than that, though. That doesn't sound very good. No, I know. They call it Squashta. <laughs> well, you know, they um, there is um, what's the kind of squash where you can you can shred it and it seems sort of like pasta, spaghetti squash. Yeah, spaghetti yeah. squash. I guess. Yeah. yeah so there's probably a real name for it, yeah, but that's what that's I always hear it called. Maybe not too far off. Like, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, so it was it was a it was a pasta. It was from Tavala because I'm always eating these Tavala meals. Um, and, and it had spaghetti, uh, or it had. Uh, I, I'm doing a horrible job of explaining this. What's the pasta that is like a tube? Oh, m macaroni penne. Rigatoni. No, no, but it's bigger than macaroni, and it's got lines rigatoni. on the edge. Penne. Rigatoni. 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 Bingo. There you go. Um, it was rigatoni yeah. with a bunch of cheese and squash, and it was delicious. And I had that in a salad for lunch. That sounds so good. I can't taste any of that. I don't. <laughs> it's a long way to go. <laughs> sounds really good. It was really good. <laughs> Are we talking about what like, we had for mm, lunch? I have some leftover Thai food in my fridge. <laughs> hmm. I, made, uh, I made cod last night. Like a, a, a lime mm. chili cod. Wow. Wow. Tell me more. <laughs> um, well, I was shopping at Ralph's and they had cod on sale and I'm like, oh, I'll do something with that. So I bought the cod, brought it home, looked up, found this recipe where you just take a bunch of spices and you mix them together. And then um, you, you create a butter, olive oil and lime sauce. And pretty much all you do is uh, you cover the cod in olive oil and then you roll it in the spices. So it gets all coated, you roast it for 12 minutes in the oven and then you drizzle the lime butter olive oil thing on it afterwards. It's delicious. Uh, sounds really good. And yeah, also good. not hard. No. Love and I am, it. I, I, it was super easy. That's, that was the thing. Yeah. You know, it's like Four minutes. I mean, the hardest thing was getting all the spices out of my spice rack and <laughs> You know, measuring them out. That was the difficult part of the entire system. That's really hard. Yeah. Where is all my stuff? Um, that sounds so good. Good work, Tom. And it tasted good. Eileen said it tasted good. Yeah. <laughs> That's always my test she because she normally doesn't. Yeah, like did her eye twitch kind of <laughs> when she said? <laughs> Look, Eileen's nice. She'll never say something's bad. She'll just be like, "It's fine. No, it's good." Right? right, I bet I can tell. And last <laughs> night, not only she's like, "Oh no, it's good," but also it was gone. Like there was yeah. nothing oh, wow. left on the plate. So. And that's 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 your yeah. You know, Wait a minute, okay. you're that's not my you know. wife. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we didn't have any leftovers because I kept us from ordering <laughs> from ordering delivery last night. There we go. It's the way to do it. Yeah. I also make garlic bread in the Tavala now. Ah, uh, mm. garlic bread. I love you just that. Just spread good. spread some butter thin on the on the bread, and then I use garlic salt. Like oh, I actually put mm, garlic, smart. shaved garlic, and parmesan. Tom, you should do a cooking show. I know, right? I'm practically <laughs> doing a cooking show. I I, I think do... about that sometimes, but then I'm like, oh, but then I have to actually know what I'm doing if I actually do it. <laughs> it's impressive you when have to enjoy what you're doing. Well, Tom in the post show saying, "Hey, this is what I did last night," could sound impressive. Tom saying, I'm doing a cooking show. Suddenly it becomes, it puts a target on your back. No, but that's like, actually, garlic that's, that, no. that might be part of the charm of it, right? Right. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Here's my show. Yeah. Pretend you know? I'm dumb about I mean, cooking. There's, there's something to that too. But you, but you don't have, but you kind of I mean, would be though, because yeah, you know, you're just some doing what you're doing. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. You that's could, uh, charm. You could do well, like um, where you're learning about cooking. You're sharing your your journey. Yeah, but then uh, that's a great idea, but it also sets you up for for the same thing of like you should have learned by now. <laughs> like I don't I don't want to be judged on my cooking. <laughs> You'll be judged regardless. That's well, life. no, I'm already judged <laughs> enough. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't. If you're, I don't if you're wanna... doing a show that's for a specific audience, like people who are. Uh, say you're working at home or or whatever or just something you can do that that's like that's actually a good idea you know i would watch a show like that because sometimes i'm thinking now oh, what am i gonna have for lunch i could make I'll, something okay here's here's that. an example of what what sets me off the other day 
I did a quick video of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I remember that. And everyone laid into me. They're like, why is your peanut butter in the fridge? What, that's that's the worst peanut butter and jelly sandwich I've ever seen. Hey, like, I what, put peanut butter all it was was people criticizing. And here's the key. In the video, I said, this is not meant to be a demonstration of how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Do not criticize me. This is just how I make it. And it didn't matter. No, you were opening yourself up to a room. I, I put peanut butter in the fridge. Um, you know, what kind of jelly? What kind of the monster fridge? are you, Roger? The jelly was the from Italy. I am the best freaking monster ever. <laughs> what kind of jelly, Tom? It's, uh, it was from Milan. Uh, I, got, I mean, I got it locally no, no, no. at a grocery what store. I, what was the jelly? Oh, oh uh, it was a blackberry jelly. Oh, okay. Mm. I was going to say. <laughs> no, blackberry's good. Blackberry's also, good. it was like, you know, un, unsalted, unsweetened, or, organic peanut butter. I think mm -hmm. that also Which set people off. Which is why you refrigerate. Yes. Why is that? Yes. Thank you. So, uh-huh. You know, that it, was, it wasn't, like really it wasn't Jif and Smuckers, so people are like, yeah. oh, Californian with his fancy ingredients. It's not <laughs> fancy. You, can, you just buy Adam's peanut butter. They... They've been selling it since the late seventies. Buy it at any supermarket. Yeah, no, everything in that peanut butter sandwich came from Ralph's. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even Whole Foods. Um, what kind of bread? Uh, Dave's Killer bread. Since we're yes. talking about it, hmm. Dave's Killer is the best, except for the uh, Power Seed one. Oh, I think this was the Super Seed. Yeah, the um, the one what that's in the yellow or the green bag. The one Blue. is like. The seeds what do you get oh the blue one i haven't what? tried the one of the red one is the the one with the power seeds the bread they use they were they substitute one of the ingredients with fruit juice mm. i don't think it works out as well i see mm -hmm. uh, now i have to check out this killer bread dave's killer bread oh, dave's killer bread is yes. really good it's good bread mm. I, I it's turned me back to sliced bread because i used like after college, I just stopped eating sliced bread. It's the best thing since sliced bread. I know. <laughs> so where do you get that? Do you get that like at a you get Ralph's? a supermarket? But I get it at Costco. Costco. Um, because okay, so a, a loaf Ralph's. typically sells for six six fifty a loaf, but you can get it at Costco for two for eight bucks. <laughs> Uh, Rich Trafalino says, I want to show where Tom only makes a different peanut butter and jelly sandwich each episode. No, what you should do is. Um, Mix up the peanut butter so it's like almond I mean, butter. You could, you could do like a solid 20 episodes of all different things. Of like peanut butter and jelly variations. <laughs> peanut butter. I mean, I'm an banana. almond butter fan myself. So that's a whole other Almond category. butter is so good. Almond butter. Best. Y'all are making me hungry and I already had lunch. Now I have to go. Yeah, I know I'm, like, again. I'm a big fan of the almond brothers myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for, I always look for good bread. That's good. <laughs> Can't you see? Yeah, there's a whole history behind it. <laughs> Len. Uh, he was yeah, a yeah, criminal man. on a... What that peanut butter hit a very been doing to me? <laughs> he, he does not have a, a clean history of, of life living. Gotcha. And uh, he turned back to the teachings of his father, who was a baker. And so he just basically started oh, baking nice. again. All right. So, so basically, Sarah... Redemption. Sarah, to, to, to get back, by saying this is just the way I make this peanut butter jelly sandwich is what caused all of the criticisms. I think you got a show here, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you How about you know you call this this is what you do. No, Tom, you it's call a show, do it. like like part of the show is about making the sandwich and part of the show is arguing with people about yeah. what no, makes a better this is this is it. It's yeah. called Bereet. And yeah. like berate, but it's berate, and you're, you're you you just get you you get you get yelled at for whatever you're making, right. and you get into arguments. Berate. No, well, you know what you could do is it could be part of like a little like five minutes, you know, a little uh, bit of uh, folksy advice where you start off the segment making the peanut butter sandwich, and you sit down in your rocking chair on the porch. What's that folksy you advice. I don't hey, know. You just come. You know hey, what? Buy, Tom, buy Tom a giant a case. He has a buy, ton of advice. Buy a giant case of fortune cookies, and I guarantee you, you'll have enough <laughs> folksy wisdom in there for at least ten episodes. Well, Usable okay, folksy yeah, sure. advice for ten episodes. Okay. <laughs> I like the fact that you'd be getting into arguments with people as you're trying to eat. 
Oh, I get the E B REAT E A T. Yeah. I was having mm -hmm. a hard time with that one. I, I'm not gonna Instead lie. Instead of B REAT, it's B REAT. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do a show where I get in arguments, people. My whole point was to avoid that. <laughs> no, no. You're you don't even have to answer them back. You just like down the down the corner is just all this abuse that's being spewed at you <laughs> while, no, while you, you sit quietly by you for your sandwich. Your closing <laughs> argument for every arg for every argument you get into is prove it. You can't. <laughs> prove it. You can't. I feel like the series doesn't even have to be about food. It can just specifically be about peanut butter and jelly because <laughs> so many people have very specific ideas of what makes the the right sandwich. No. Maybe that's what you do. Maybe I lean into it. And each episode, I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but explain why it's wrong. <laughs> like, like use a bagel or something. Ne yeah. You know what I mean? Like make it well, out no, of Well, no, just everything is like, now see, the problem is Dave's killer bread is too seedy for a real peanut butter sandwich. Right. Yeah. And while we're on the subject, how about Amazon? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, actually, we could just do it on this show. I'll just I'll just start making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches during DTNS. Speaking <laughs> of food, and we'll turn each one into a metaphor. It's the pre-show, right? <laughs> Instead of Hat Friday, it's PB and J Friday. <laughs> PB and J Friday. Uh, right. I'm waiting for you to do the show where you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on a bagel. <laughs> so I can get really when? angry. You, you've mentioned the things. bagel twice now. Like, what in the world? Peanut butter. That's a terrible. Bagel. That's, that's a terrible. Not acceptable. No, that's I've sweet, seen, sweet. I've seen them as an option. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, that's uh, awful. That's you've like never had peanut butter, butter and jelly sandwich out of an English muffin. <gasps> no. well, nothing wrong with that. I've done that. Never. Yeah. Yes. No, but you have to toast the muffins. You just can't put it willy nilly. No, yeah, no, toast it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Listen, if you've never had peanut butter or anything toasted, you're missing out on life. No, no. We're talking about peanut butter and jelly. You know what? Don't put that on a bagel. Yes. No. Why not? Don't no do it. No, I, don't, I agree with the bagel, but English muffin, yeah. I can totally put it on English muffin. Nah. Mm, yeah. Peanut butter and cream cheese. Croissant? No, that'll Croissant? be terrible. Oh, gosh. I can't even talk to you people. <laughs> no, that's... Okay, yeah. No, I wasn't suggesting it was a, a good idea. Bro. I've done the ham the hamburger bun's just disappointing. Yeah, just like oh, yeah. it's all bun. Oh, god. <laughs> oh my god, Rich Straffolino is finding no, domain names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh my god. <laughs> all right. Uh, amongst all this, I think I published the show. So it's Very it's good. possible I even published it correctly, but I make no promises about that. Um, oh. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, I hope you enjoy in your audio feed the new DTNS Labs episodes. And we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye.